My name is Christine Lavelle and I'm here at Beth Chatter Gardens today to have a look at aquatic plants. Beth Chatter Gardens have got a series of three ponds leading through the central area of the main garden and they are absolutely stunning. It's my job today to take you around these ponds to have a look at the various layers within the ponds themselves. Today we're going to be looking at bog garden plants and then we're also going to be having a look at marginal aquatic plants and deep water aquatic plants and then lastly floating plants uh, here at Beth Chatter Gardens today. Looking at the different areas around the pond, the first one that we're going to have a look at is the bog garden. Now the bog garden is the area surrounding the pond where the soil is not covered over by water on a permanent basis. It's, the soil is constantly fed by the water from the pond and is moist most of the, the year round but the actual plants themselves are not submerged in water. So here's an example over here. This is the Chilean giant rhubarb uh, known botanically as Gunnera manicata. Uh, as its name suggests, it comes from Chile and Brazil, uh, from South America, and it's slightly tender and can get frosted earlier on in the year if you have some late frost in April, for example. So this the next type of planting around the pond that we would like to have a look at and discuss is the marginal plant areas. And these are the areas around the very margins of the, of the pond where it's shallow. You do have water over the plant roots on a permanent basis, but they're not planted in really deep water situations. So this is a classic marginal plant here. We have Iris levigata here. When this comes into flower, it will have lovely purpley blue flowers. And as I said before, this is a classic marginal plant. We've had a look at plants that are classic bog garden plants and plants which are classic marginal plants. Now, the next two plants that I'd like to discuss, uh, they can be in both coats. They can be both a bog garden plant and a marginal plant. And for many plants, this is the case. Now, the one that you can see in the picture with the uh, buttercup yellow flowers and it has got buttercup yellow flowers because it's in the Ranunculaceae family, which is the same family as the buttercup. However, not in the same genus. This is called Caltha, and this is Caltha palustris. Palustris in Latin means from the marsh, from the bog, and hence the name Caltha palustris. Now, this can be both a bog garden plant, as you can see, it's on the bankings here where it's feet are in soil which don't, doesn't have water lapping over the, the edge of it but it's in permanently moist soil and then you can see how it's crept down into the water acting as a marginal plant as well so you could put these in both types of situation. Just behind it you can see long linear leaves uh, very different texture to the round leaves of the Caltha palustris and that's a larger iris than we had a look at last time. This is the native flag iris, Iris pseudocorus. Uh, when this grows up, it will eventually flower in a, a few months, a few weeks time, sorry. Uh, that will have yellow iris flowers on it, and that's the yellow flag iris. Again, uh, this iris pseudocorus can either be grown in a bog garden situation or it can be used in a marginal area of a pond as well. That one can get quite... Uh, vigorous in terms of its growth. Well, both of them can, so you've got to be careful about where you put them. Not really ideal for a small pond situation. This is an unusual bog garden plant. This is Lysaketin Kamchatsensis. It took me ages to learn how to say that. It's really quite a difficult one. Uh, to see. Now normally you see the yellow flowering one which is Liza Keaton Americana which is the American skunk cabbage. Named skunk cabbage because the flowers stink. You can see the spadexes 
uh, on the flower here. Uh, they're just starting to go over, but the leaves will get really big during the uh, during the summer months, and it's quite an architectural plant at the side of a pond. Not looking like much at the moment. This is Pontideria cordata, which is a cracking plant. It's got sagittate oblong shaped leaves when they come up and then it's got spikes of bluey purple flowers later on in the season. So although some things are looking good in the pond at the moment, it's well worth thinking about, uh, just like how you would for your border, of extending the season of interest within the pond and planting different aquatic species which you can flower which flower at different times of the year. Like the last plant Pontideria cordata, this one is also another marginal plant for the pond and this is Thalia deobata. Not looking very majestic at this time of the year, but that's because it's another one just like the Pontideria cordata that comes in to its own later on in the season. If you're looking for a tropical feel to a pond, this is the plant to choose, Thalia deobata. It's got big, or large, oblong architectural type foliage and then lovely spikes of purple flowers, but again later on in the season. This does form quite a dense clump. One's thought to be a plant where you would use it only in a temperate or a tropical glass house, but Beth Chatter Gardens have left this plant out for a number of years, I believe up to about nine years now, and it's been fully hardy outside. So well worth looking at getting Thalia deal batter to give your pond a nice tropical look. really providing a bit of a focal point within the, the pond. A focal point is a part within a, a garden or a landscape that takes your eye to it and the very brightly coloured foliage of the variegated iris pseudocorus, the flag iris, really does take your eye down to the end of the pond. I'll just zoom in and so you can see what I mean just here at the end. It is fantastic. So uh, if you're looking for a, a bit of brightness in your pond, Iris Pseudochorus is the one for you. A good couple of bog garden plants that we've got here, if you're looking for a selection of plants for round about the edge of the pond, the pond where you've got the permanently moist soil, Although uh, irises, many of them are marginal uh, plantings in ponds, you can also get many irises which will do bog garden situations here. And there's a lovely little variegated one here. And then just behind that, nearest uh, the front of the, the bottom of the, the picture, is hostas again unfurling themselves out from the winter dormancy. So hostas are a great plant for use around the, the peripheral areas of the pond in the bog. Just taking our way around, just zooming in, euphorbias, you often think of euphorbias to be used uh, in dry garden situations, but there is a euphorbia palustris, and as I mentioned earlier, palustris means coming from the marsh, coming from the bog, so around the peripheral areas of ponds, not in the margins, but just in the boggy areas, Euphorbia palustris is an excellent choice of plant for that particular environment. My favourite deep water aquatic plant is Nymphaea, the water lily. My favourite cultivar is Chromatella, uh, and that's a, a really lovely lemon coloured one, it's not garish yellow or but just a lovely pale lemon colour. Um, I'm, I'm unsure of this particular cultivar here, it's not obviously not in flower, the new leaves are just starting uh, to come out now, but these provide shade for any creatures living in and around the pond area, so it provides a, a good wildlife habitat under the water for the creatures, but also a basking site for many species such as dragonfly, 
which land on the pads themselves to sun themselves during the summer months. Another great plant to use in the bog garden is different types of Brugersia. There's Panata, Esculifolia, uh, and many others, as well as lots of different cultivars that you can use. These are just emerging at the moment, but these are excellent plants in terms of uh, how good they are for the foliage. And as I said previously, that foliage plants, I always call them good value for money plants because they look great all season long through the spring going into the summer and the autumn just beyond that you can see a patch of ligularia now this one definitely is uh, dentata desdemona the previous one wasn't quite as purple as that so it's perhaps another cultivar and then as we zoom out of this you can see a, a lovely big patch again of that lysochetan what an impact it has uh, on the pond at this time of year aesthetically.